Episode 3 of our Cambodia travel vlog, we left you off on our midday break during day 2. After a much needed hour of food, rest and rejuvenation, we began the second half of our day with the other anchor. I'm referring of course to Anchor Tom. So Anchor Tom was actually the very last capital city of the ancient Khmer Empire and the one that lasted the longest stretch of time serving this function. It was built in the late 12th century and it covers a pretty large area, about 3.5 square miles to be exact. I'm going to repeat myself here, but just to be clear, Anchor Tom is not a standalone temple. It's literally an entire ancient city, so when you walk around you see all sorts of buildings and monuments that were built at various times and eventually formed together to make it the capital of the Khmer Empire. <laughs> this is my other five. This is amazing. It's, it's, I've seen it in pictures, and I was amazed then, but this is definitely... <laughs> Bomb.com. Because we had already done a good deal of filming in the first half of the day, and because we were somewhat tired and really just wanted to enjoy exploring the place, we really only filmed only one site in Anchor Tom, and that's the one you're watching in this clip. The state temple called Bayon is located at the center of this ancient city and it's most famous for the numerous face carvings that can be found throughout the place. Much like Angkor Wat, it was also the most heavily trafficked of all the ruins in Angkor Thom. Definitely a must see but don't neglect some of the other spots either. Take some cool pictures like we did and just appreciate it all. Guys, naming Martin. Day three of our archaeological or anchor archaeological park tour. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. um, first two days were incredible. If uh, you've already watched those videos, then uh, salute. If you haven't, go check them out so you can kind of watch the, uh, the tour as we experienced it. Right. Uh, we are in the Cambodian countryside right now. Yes. Heading further north to uh, Bantan Srey, um, which is... I think it's Bansi Srey. Oh, I'm like, terrible with these pronunciations. Bansi Srey. Bansi Srey. And then we'll end up at Nam Kulen, I think is how you pronounce it. And that's where the waterfall is. Yeah, so we're, we're chasing some waterfalls uh, today. Super excited. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the cool thing about uh, Bantan Srey compared to the other temples we saw is that pretty much all of the other ones that uh, we saw on day one and two were built during the 12th century uh, going into the 13th century and they were uh, so they were, a lot of them were originally started out as Hindu temples and then as Cambodia converted to Buddhism um, they uh, they converted to Buddhist temples right because the religion changed right but this um, one's still well, this one was built in the 10th century, so a whole 200 years earlier, and it's uh, solely a Hindu temple, so it was never adjusted to, to, you know, become a Buddhist temple. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. So, we'll see you there. Enjoy the ride. Rediscovered in the year of 1914, the name Bansi Shrey translates into Citadel of Women, or alternatively, Citadel of Beauty. The assumption is that the name comes from the beautiful, intricate carvings found on the walls of the buildings, as well as their generally minute size compared to the majority of the temples that are found around Angkor Wat. 
and Angkor Thom. The place itself isn't limited to the gorgeous temple and you can easily spend a few hours there walking around. We stopped at various places including what they called a lookout point, which was really just a small wooden pier that jutted out into a lush green open field with a shallow pond. We also spent a few minutes in the museum reading about the history of the place and grabbed a coconut milk cappuccino by the Lotus Pond to relax for a few. All in all, it was definitely worth the 45 minute ride from Siem Reap, especially since the ride itself was relaxing and enjoyable. So, we're too cheap to pay for a tour guide, but I overheard, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we actually just don't want one prefer to explore on our own, but I overheard the uh, the tour guide saying that this temple right here is the only one that wasn't built by the king, um, as opposed to all the other temples like Angkor Wat and stuff like that. So it's an interesting fact for you guys that I overheard from the, the tour guide. Uh, yeah, but if you are into tour guides, you know, it's cool because you can learn a few little facts here and there like that. After we finished up, we hopped back into our tuk-tuk and went even further north to Nam Kulen. Nam Kulen is labeled as being a national park and it's an absolutely beautiful place to go for a hike. If you make your way to the very top, you'll be rewarded with some really neat river carvings. But that's not really the cherry on the cheesecake though. The real reward is a little bit further back down from the top. Not too far from the stream is a beautiful waterfall with very few people except for some locals and an occasional tourist. After that, we hiked down and our tuk-tuk driver took us back south to one final temple called Van Ti Samurai. We won't show you that here, but if you want to watch a really cool yoga flow that I did there, you can find it in my personal YouTube by searching for Padma B Yoga plus Cambodia Yoga Flows. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.